Disclaimer. None of the songs, including intro, artworks, including thumbnail, or characters in the video are mine. This is not an accurate portrayal of the characters. This is not a defamation of character either. This is only for entertainment. Warning. Foul language. Grammatical mistakes. Typographical errors. After Toru finished crying, they both sat down on a nearby bench, leaning on each other as the atmosphere was filled with only the sound of each other's breathing. I'm sorry. Toru spoke after a long time. His voice soft and quiet. He knew they still needed to talk about what happened. I just... I got lost in my head again and I almost... Toru choked as he remembered what he almost did. The the knife was there and I... Atsumu's hold on Toru tightened. Cutting off the older's words. There was no need for Toru to continue because Atsumu understood already. Then you called and I realized what I was doing and I was so horrified because I promised you and I didn't want to disappoint you. Toru still rambled because Atsumu was silent and his guilt was getting to him. You could never disappoint me. Atsumu cut off Toru's words. I told you didn't I. I want to be there for you. It's not easy and I understand that. You will always have those urges and you will always have those thoughts and maybe. Hopefully in the future. They would go away. But I know that right now. There would be times when you'll drown in your thoughts. And that would never disappoint me. You would never disappoint me. Atsumu was facing Toru now. Their foreheads pressed together. All I'm asking is that you let me be there for you. When your thoughts threaten to drown you. Let me be there to pull you up. When everything becomes too loud. Too overwhelming. Let me protect you from them. When everything becomes too silent. And nothing is enough. Let me fill the void. I am your best friend and I will always be here for you. Just like I know you'll always be there for me. Just like I know you're still here because of me. Do you understand me Toru? Toru nodded. Because he did. He does understand. Atsumu's the first person who can understand him fully. Maybe because they are so similar to each other. Yes. Toru nodded again while he choked out a wet laugh. One that was short but full of emotions. One that is so indescribably happy. Even before everything went to shit. Toru always thought of Atsumu as more than just a friend. Not romantically but. More than just a friend. Like a brother perhaps. As if reading Toru's mind. Atsumu spoke once more. You know. Sometimes I think you're more my twin than Samu. Toru let out a laugh because he totally gets what Atsumu is saying. They have so much in common that they could mirror each other's movements and thoughts. Atsumu and Osamu may look physically identical, but their attitude and behavior go entirely different ways. I mean, I love Samu but, Atsumu shrugged, but that's okay. He doesn't have to say anything for Toru to understand. They both remain unaware of Osamu eavesdropping on them from behind a tree, blanketed by the dark. They both remain unaware of how the other's face crumpled as tears started to drop from his eyes. They both remain unaware of how he grasped at his chest hoping to stave off the pain. They both remain unaware how he looked up to the sky. A bitter yet thankful smile on his face because at least his twin had someone there for him when he failed to be. They both remain unaware as he silently walked away with his heart heavy yet light at the same time because Atsumu has someone he can lean on now. Even if it's not him. And he failed to hear Atsumu's next words. But still. I won't change a thing. Osamu's my twin and I love him a lot. And maybe we don't have a lot in common. Maybe we're not at all similar. And maybe we're complete opposites of each other. But I would never change him. Not for anybody. Even if he hates me right now. I would always love him and if he finds it in himself to accept me once more. Then I would welcome him back with open arms. Because he's my Samu. He's my brother and he will always be my brother. Toru smiled at that. So rather than my brother. Rather than my twin. Toru. I think of you more as my soulmate. Soulmate. Toru smiled. That word fits what Atsumu is to him perfectly. Osamu walked around in a daze. He's been kicked out of the court because he's been out of it. He couldn't sleep last night after what he heard. Not even when his eyes hurt so much from crying. He brought upon himself. He knows that. And it's pathetic that he's moping around but, knowing that he hurt Atsumu so much that he replaced Osamu as his twin, hurts more than anything else he's ever experienced. He went to look for Atsumu last night in hopes that he could finally beg for forgiveness. He thought that maybe their conversation the night before was a sign that they could fix their relationship. But he's too late. 
So now he's walking around because he was so out of it that even Atsumu got worried. Suddenly, a shadow fell on him making him look up and up and up and up. What in the actual fuck is Barito the purple dinosaur from Shingeki on my freaking sanity doing here? Osamu always prided himself on his height. He knew he was tall, but this person in front of him is on a whole other level. He was so tall that Osamu thought he'd break his neck just looking at him. He was also very purple. Crunch. The person who was very familiar by the way, stared down at Osamu as he chewed non-stop. Is, is this a threat? Is he threatening to eat me? Hello. Osamu slowly and reluctantly took his eyes away from the giant in front of him to look at the man beside the giant who was wearing a pleasant smile. The other man, after greeting him, looked at the giant beside him. Atsushikun, that's not your father. Osamu's eyebrows met together in confusion. What does that mean? Of course I'm not his father. Huh? But they look alike. I assume they're brothers. Twins in fact. Is that why he didn't give me head pats? Osamu watched them talk about him and Atsumu as if he wasn't there. More of Atsumu's friends that he doesn't know, and don't know who he is. Let's go Mido Rimakun's going to scold you again if we're late. Atsushi grumbled as he stomped away. Cheer up Atsushi. The sooner we finish training, the sooner you can get yard headputs from Tsumu. Before they finally walked away, the non-purple one looked back at Osamu and waved him goodbye. By Tsumu's twin. Osamu's eyebrows furrowed at that. He always had different feelings regarding that nickname. On one hand, it's slightly annoying being referred to as Atsumu's twin. Mostly because that's sometimes the only thing people know of him. Not Osamu, but another Atsumu. Most of the time though, he felt pride in it. Pride in his brother, and pride that he's Atsumu's brother. It was a weird feeling because when people compliment Atsumu, Osamu could feel his chest bloom in pride. He was tempted to gloat every time. Yes, that's my brother and he's amazing. Appreciate him. Then things changed and suddenly he hated it even more. Because Atsumu's annoying. Atsumu's weak. Atsumu's pathetic. Atsumu became a name that's associated with everything negative. And he doesn't want to be associated with Atsumu or his name because it felt like he's being painted in the same broken brush. And now he doesn't even know if that title is something he's worthy of holding. He could be Atsumu's doppelganger, or Atsumu's lookalike. Detached, and a meaningless title for someone who only looks like him. It's no longer the familiar and intimate Atsumu's brother, Atsumu's other half, Atsumu's twin. There's someone more worthy of that title now. He knows he doesn't deserve that title anymore but at the very least, he still wishes to be a part of Atsumu's life. To be known by those whom Atsumu loves, not even his name, but just the fact that he exists. Because it hurts so much seeing Atsumu smile lovingly at people when he can't even look him in the eye. But he's accepted that that's his doing. It may hurt a lot, and it won't ever stop hurting but he knows he deserves it. But what hurts even more is seeing those people smile lovingly back at Atsumu and then when they look at him, all Osamu sees is surprise. Because they don't know him, they don't know his name, or that he even existed in the first place. Because Atsumu never told them. Because they knew Akaji. Kitta, Eren, and Omimi, but not him, because he fucked up so bad that Atsumu isn't even acknowledging his existence anymore, he never thought he would miss to be known as someone connected to Atsumu, because in the first place, he never thought that connection would be severed, hey you're Atsumu's brother, a second Atsumu, Atsumu's twin, the Mia twins, and now it's all, Atsumu never told me he had a twin, Atsumu-san didn't tell me he has a brother, because to Atsumu, the only brother he has is Toru. The next training was a lot harder and harsher than all the previous ones. And that's because they'll have to cut it short later for Atsumu, Ryota, and Toru's photoshoot. And also because they're training with Toru and Kotaro as their opponents. Needless to say, it was freaking hard. Kotaro was already a monster before but now that he's paired with another monster, and has professional training, even Suna is having a hard time catching up. And Toru was just annoying. He's not moving much because of his injury but he's smart and a very talented setter still. Not to mention his overpowered serves. The only upside is that the two's teammates are the bench warmers. So they could still fight. But still, it's ridiculous how well Toru and Kotaro work together. Shutoku's not doing any better. In fact, they're doing worse. Because their coach is a sadist or something. 
They may be one of the best teams in Japan but it's still ambitious to go against Tiger, Ryota, Atsushi, Tatsuya, and Tetsuya together in one team. With Tiger guarding him, Atsushi guarding the ring, Tetsuya passing the ball, Tatsuya and Ryota shooting, Shintaro can't even score, much less anyone else. It's honestly a very pitiful sight, and Shintaro's having a revelation. Is this what the teams we went against in middle school felt? Yes. Shintaro blinked. He wasn't aware he said that out loud. He looked at Takao again when he heard the other laugh. You must not want Atsumu babe to see this ha? Huh? Shintaro narrowed his eyes at the challenge and rolled his shoulders as a determined look passed on his face. Takao could only watch in amusement. In the end they still lost. Although Shintaro did manage to score a few points. Which is just impressive considering their opponents. Damn. So that's the power of love. Even their opponents became cautious. Which made the entire Shutoku team smile maniacally. Ryota huffed. You still lost. But his voice was empty of pride and joy at that achievement. Taka smirked as he looked at the lone Shintaro gasping for air at the side. The determined glint in his eyes still present. It wasn't about winning Kisekun. Everyone knew that. Everyone knew they didn't have a chance to win. But the last minutes of the game was still impressive. With how Shintaro managed to get through the other team's almost unbeatable defense and scored numerous times. Maybe. Just maybe. Shintaro can finally enter the zone. And they have a certain blonde to thank for that. After an entire day of torture disguised as training, the Inarizaki team all filed slowly into the baths to soak into the hot water and let their muscles relax. Unfortunately, Atsumu doesn't get the luxury since he still has a photoshoot to get to. Even Kotaro was given the chance to enjoy the bath since he was made as the enemy of the team. Not that he was complaining since he was able to get training even on his supposed day off. So a stiff and aching Atsumu is leaning on Toru who's leading them to where their photoshoot venue is. Since Atsumu made his coach aware of Toru's condition, they didn't allow him to play as much. Aside from playing setter in the first round, he mostly played as a pinch server, which means he's currently the only one who doesn't feel like they've been hit by a bus. Kua tell me honestly, am I purple, or green, or blue, or everything at once? Because I feel like my entire body is one big bruise, and I don't think I'd look very good in the photoshoot, unless of course the theme is aliens or something like that, and even then I don't feel really beautiful right now. Babe be honest with me, do I look ugly? Now, Toru would really love to put Atsumu's worries to rest but, they wouldn't be best friends if they didn't mess with each other sometimes, if not most times. So, Toru chuckled as he poked Atsumu's abs, earning a groan of pain from the blonde. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder Tsumu. That doesn't really answer my question Kora. Toru laughed internally before composing himself to look wise. It's that heart of gold, and stardust soul that make you beautiful. Atsumu snorted while his eyes rolled. We both know I don't have a heart of gold and what the fuck does stardust soul even mean? And again, that doesn't really answer my question Kora. I hate when you ask people if you're beautiful and they spout some wise sounding quote BS like. Atsumu cleared his throat and straightened up a bit, readying himself to perform an Oscar worthy acting. Do I look beautiful? He said his voice higher and softer, as if to imitate a bashful young lady. Then he cleared his throat again, this time sounding deeper and his voice more hoarse, to portray an old person, with all the wisdom they've gained in their years on earth. True beauty is on the inside. After his performance, Atsumu slouched once more, most of his weight on Toru. He rolled his eyes as he began to complain again. Umbish, that doesn't help my confidence. Just say yes or no. Lift my self-esteem or destroy it totally. Not leave me unsure and paranoid. Gad seriously. Toru laughed throughout Atsumu's performance slash speech. Beauty begins the moment you decide to be yourself. Okay that's it. Square up bish. My body might be one big bruise but soon enough. Yours will be too. Ha 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 ha. Toru decided to stop messing with Atsumu lest he goes through with his words. He knows his best friend won't hesitate to throw hands no matter the situation. Not even against him and with his body battered. Don't worry babe, you look very pretty. Unfortunately, Atsumu wasn't contented with his words. Like oh my gosh you're so pretty or you're pretty for someone like you pretty like human pretty or unidentified alien creature who's oddly pretty. Pretty? As if realizing something, Atsumu let out a loud and exaggerated gasp. 
Oh my god Cora. Do I look like a mini Thanos? Toru doubled over in laughter, earning another groan from Atsumu as his body followed Toru's. Cora I'm serious. Please tell me I don't look like a mini Thanos. You're not purple don't worry. Oh thank god. You look more blue than purple to be honest. Yondu. Toru laughed once more, holding his stomach as it hurt so much. Babe stop moving. It hurts. Toru didn't stop laughing and Atsumu just kept on talking. Although Yondu is very much daddy, he's not really pretty. At least tell me I look like Nebula. Toru didn't answer since he was laughing too much. Kora. A little while later, Shintaro and Tiger who also didn't get to enjoy the bath, but by choice since they wanted to support Atsumu and Toru, met the two of them on their way to the venue, along with a sulking Ryota who's cursing Takao, Tatsuya, and Tetsuya for not accompanying him. Look, I'm not going to give up a relaxing soak in the hot springs over watching those four flirt. If ever I do, take it as a sign that I've officially gone crazy and about to commit murder. That was what Takao said as he shooed Ryota away without looking at him, thoroughly enjoying the hot spring. Tatsuya just smiled at him while Tetsuya turned invisible. Ryota agrees wholeheartedly of course, and if it were any other situation, he would have been there alongside them. Except he doesn't really have a choice. And now he's suffering. Toru took one look at Shintaro, and Shintaro's hair before sending a shit-eating grin towards Atsumu. Hey Nebula look, it's Gamora. Kora. Shintaro looked in confusion. Atsumu was whining as Toru kept on teasing him. And Tiger stared at the mischievous Toru with a lovesick gaze. And Ryota is still suffering. So he gripped his phone with teary eyes as he complained to his boyfriend. I miss our Minichi. Ryota, Atsumu, and Toru had just finished posing for their first outfit when the large group consisting of both Shutoku and Inaz Rizuki arrived to watch them. Apparently, they wanted to watch how a photoshoot actually works, and the Inarizuki team wanted to show their support and maybe know more about their captain, the new him, the him they know almost nothing about. Unfortunately, their presence only made him self-conscious and uncomfortable. He felt like their stares are judging him. Noticing this, Osamu took charge and got his teammates' attention and told them to explore Kyoto and not bother the others while doing their work. His voice caught the staff's attention and all of them did a double take when they saw him. As the staff are used to bystanders watching them, they didn't pay attention to the large group. And as long as they didn't cause any disturbance, they are welcome to stay. So Osamu speaking caught their attention. The first thing Atsumu's manager did was examine the grey-haired male from head to foot before turning to look at Atsumu. You never told me you have a twin. Atsumu just gave a strained smile and shrugged at her. I didn't think I had to. And that was true. He didn't think he had to tell her because he was so used to not having to. Because he never had to. She sighed. Atsumu, these are the things you should be telling me about. And the things you should be posting about. The key to being famous is to stay connected. And that is through social media. So you should really start posting more online. Twitter and Instagram specifically since those two are the largest platforms right now for your target audience. This is also appropriate for when you go pro. You need to connect with your fans. You need to post at least. Atsumu's thoughts drowned out all her words. Lost in his memory. Osamu and him were once inseparable. Even though most saw them fighting each other. The point is. When someone meets a twin. They meet the other. He never had to say. Oh by the way I have a twin. Because he never had to state the obvious. Not when Osamu was right there beside him. I wonder when it all changed. Atsumu tried to remember when he and Osamu started existing separately rather than together and he can't seem to recall. Then he tried to recall the people he met when he wasn't with Osamu. And he thinks those are only the basketball squad and Kim Kong. Isn't it weird that I actually have friends who don't know Samu? After being saved by Hiwan, he and Toru befriended her and found out that she owns Starstream, the bar resto arcade, along with her boyfriend Hyunsung. And that it was set up like that because it was primarily their friend group's hangout place. Even though they all live together. And since they had kids in their friend group. They made the bar kid friendly too. Atsumu knows all about those details about them. Including the fact that their leader slash beloved squid slash resident rat bastard's room is in the basement of their house so he couldn't run away. And that sometimes when he's missing. He's either dead or drugged and imprisoned in his room so he wouldn't die. 
Similarly, they know a lot about Atsumu too since he overshares sometimes. And yet, he doesn't think they know about Osamu, that he has a brother, much less a twin. Because like he said, he never had to talk about Osamu unless when they insult each other. And without Osamu there, there's no one to insult and fight with. And the basketball squad wouldn't have known either if they didn't meet Osamu. Atsumu was once so used to Osamu just being there. He wonders when he got used to him not being there. Was Osamu the one who pulled away? Or was it me? Atsumu lifted his head, his golden eyes meeting with silver ones. And he could see the surprise in them before they both looked away. When did I stop looking my brother in the eye? Was it after all the things he said to me? Or was it before? When I knew he didn't like Kiyumi? Atsumu's vision was blocked with pink. Blinking, he realized that Ayumi, his manager, just walked to Osamu. He didn't even notice she left his side. Hey Atsumu's twin. What's your name? I can't just keep calling you Atsumu's twin. Osamu stared down at Ayumi in surprise, not knowing where she came from. He lifted his head and his and Atsumu's eyes met once more before he hurriedly moved his sight back to Ayumi. Osamu. Well Osamu, would you like to model? What? Osamu asked but Ayumi just kept on speaking. She probably didn't even hear Osamu speak. People would love twins. I can assure you that. You and Atsumu would be partners and if you'd like can be the manager of you both. But if you don't want to continue as a model then that's fine too but I'd really love it if you can try it just for now. You and Atsumu could partner up. It would be perfect. Double the handsomeness but with different vibes. Don't get me wrong. Oikora. Kisei. And Atsumu look good together but like they're all too similar you know. You and Atsumu though have the same face. But are totally different. Trust me. People would love you both. Osamu wasn't listening anymore. All the sounds that's coming out of Aumi's mouth sound muffled. Drowned out by the sound of his heartbeat. Does he want to do this? He doesn't know. Atsumu hates him. And he'd probably be mad if Osamu barges in on something he can claim as his. But, Osamu misses him so much. He miss them together. And Atsumu might not see him as his brother anymore and he knows that's his fault but, a stubborn part of Osamu refuses to give up. Atsumu's his best friend. Atsumu's his brother. Atsumu's his twin. Not Toru but Osamu. It's always been Osamu. And maybe, maybe to Atsumu that's no longer true but Osamu still wants to be known. To be seen with Atsumu. And maybe this is his chance. To show that he's a part of Atsumu's life. To be a part of Atsumu's life again. He hates the cameras and and hates the attention but if that means that he'd be able to share something with Atsumu again then he'd take it. Atsumu would hate him. He knows that. But so what? He already hates me anyway. The opposite of love isn't hate, but apathy. He's sick and tired of Atsumu avoiding him. And he'd prefer it if the blonde would just spew poison in his direction. Anything, even hatred, is better than I didn't know Atsumu has a twin. Briefly, Osamu looked in Atsumu's direction, trying to examine his brother for a reaction. Any reaction. But Atsumu wasn't even looking in his direction. Busy talking with Toru. Stealing himself. Osamu looked down at Aumi and said in a firm voice. Loud enough for Atsumu to hear. I'll do it. He doesn't know yet if this choice is another chance. Or the final nail in the coffin of their almost non-existent relationship. All he knows is that he doesn't have anything left to lose. And if this does destroy their relationship, well it's not like there's much of anything left to destroy. Not when Osamu already tore everything to ruin. At least this way, people will know of his existence. That Atsumu has a twin. The photoshoot went. Well, the twins, as expected, looked great together. Kind of like a puzzle being completed. Except, there was something off. They were more like an old puzzle with the pieces already frayed at the sides due to years of abuse. Like even though you completed the puzzle perfectly, some pieces just didn't fit well together. That no matter how much you push a piece down, it would still pop back up because the sides no longer fit. The cameras thankfully didn't capture the awkward tension surrounding them. Rather than twins who spent their entire lives together, they were more like strangers who were forced to interact with each other. Maybe that's why the staff proposed a celebration party, to clear the air, or maybe they just wanted to party and would use any reason, no matter how small, to do so. All of them agreed because free food, and they seriously deserve a break after the torture they've just experienced. They also didn't know how to leave with the aura surrounding the twins. 
Their coaches of course reminded them that they have training early tomorrow and anyone who would whine and complain that they didn't get enough sleep would jog 10 laps. They shrugged it all off because they can just complain internally or at least when the coaches aren't there to hear it. It was more bearable than the dinner they had yesterday since they aren't being forced to sit together. Most just kept to themselves and their friends groups and while a few people would roam around trying to get to know each other, all of them aren't really part of the conflict. Ryota, bored, stood up and pulled Kotaro towards the karaoke they set up but nobody's touching. So their approach to the machine immediately caught the attention of others and got some cheers from their friends. When they heard the melody play, more cheers rang out then slowly died down to savor the sweet and slow tune. And the truth was painful and ugly but it was the truth. One that I remained blind to. Toru thought as he looked at the man who pulled him from the edge he led himself to upon finding out. Literally. And found the taller redhead already looking at him. He smiled. Kitkat. Would you like to dance with me? Tiger took a second to process Toru's words. When he did. He sent the older a toothy grin before letting himself be led to the dance floor. Thank God I found you, I was lost without you. As the two slowly swayed back and forth, the others found themselves entranced, one more so than the others, casting a sideways glance to the blonde silently cheering for his best friend. Shintaro slowly stood then bowed in front of Atsumu, one hand on his back while the other offered itself to Atsumu. My princess, would you honor this lowly prince with a dance? Atsumu blinked slightly in surprise before throwing his head back in laughter. Then he grabbed Shintaro's hands and excitedly pulled him to the dance floor beside Toru and Tiger. Upon seeing them, Toru raised an amused eyebrow. Monkey see, monkey do Tsumu. Atsumu just stuck his tongue out at him. The others were content to watch the two not couples dance as they sway along to the tune of the music. Except for Taka, who was busy contorting his body in different positions as he pretends to be a professional photographer. But since he was moving too much, the photos were blurry. Thankfully, the three models managers told the actual professional photographers to take aesthetic photos. Some of them were even filming them, especially Ryota who was showcasing his talent in singing. Oh, thank God I found you, I'm begging you, lost without you, my every wish and every dream somehow became reality. When Osamu decided that he'd be a model so he could be at Sumu's partner again, even if only in the professional setting, he thinks he was deluding himself. Watching the scene in front of him somehow made the cracks between them seem wider. They may be in the same circle but they might as well be on opposite sides of the planet. So desolate. Over the rain to appreciate the gift of one we have. Osamu wishes he appreciated what they had better. He'd do anything to bring things back to how it was before he fucked it all up. This way, what is this feeling? Without any 
I almost lost without you. My life got so much brighter with you. I didn't even know there was something missing until you came along. Well hello, mother. Atsumu raised his chin up at Tetsuya, who appeared from nowhere. I didn't expect you to be here. I didn't think you were thick enough to show your face to me after your betrayal. Those who were in the know were snickering while those who do not were either confused or worried. I just came to see how you were. Well I'm doing good, as you can see. My prince is treating me well. Then he moved his gaze to Taka who was laughing beside Tetsuya. I see you've brought your boy toy. Taka laughed in delight at being called a boy toy. Don't be so rude Atsumu. Tetsuya chided, although the amused glint in his eyes betrayed the tone of his voice. A lot are still confused, but no longer worried because some were laughing at the scene. Rude. Atsumu scoffed dramatically. Rude as you abandoning your beloved son to die in the cold. Whoever said you were beloved. That got a lot of surprised lauters. Even Atsumu let out one, before he composed himself into a shocked gasp. Oh he got you there. Shut up Koa. You don't have a prince. Toru raised an eyebrow at him. I am the Grand King. And unlike you lowly mortals. I have no need for a prince. Takao. Who's still laughing. Interjected. You should show more respect. Princess Atsumu. You talk big for someone who was chosen out of pity. Atsumu staggered back with a hand on his chest. Falling into Shintaro's arms as if he'd been shot. My prince. Tell me it isn't true. Shintaro bit his cheeks to stop himself from laughing as he looked down on the dramatic blonde in his arms. I'm sorry my princess, but it's true. Takao is now on the floor wheezing, but I do not regret my choice, for have truly fallen for you. Atsumu sniffled, a real tear running down his cheeks. Some looked in amazement, mostly at Shintaro's confession but Toru is just shaking his head at how dramatic his best friend is. Your words grant me much happiness, my prince but I feel it is too late. Their poisonous words have reached my heart. Atsumu shook his head slowly, tears still running down his face. No, he said in a horrified whisper as he tightened his hold on Atsumu. My prince. Atsumu lifted a hand to Shintaro's cheek. Avenge me my prince. Avenge me. And with that last whisper, Atsumu's hand fell dramatically to symbolize his death. Everyone is laughing at this point. Shintaro slowly laid Atsumu's body on the floor as he stood up and glared at Tetsuya and Taka who composed their faces from terribly amused into a more serious look. You have taken my beloved away from me. In return, I would take yours as well. Taka raised his chin in defiance. I am in league with the queen. You, a lowly prince, has nothing against us. Oh. Shintaro raised his hand, holding a phone currently calling someone. Taka squinted to see the letters better. I wonder what the king has to say about your affair. Calling Akashi. Shinchan. Taka screamed in genuine horror. Immediately breaking character. Are you insane? Akashi's gonna kill me. <coughs> After preventing Taka's death, the atmosphere lightened considerably. The others, following Ryota and Kotaro's example, went to sing while others danced. The Shutoku team took the opportunity to dance with Atsumu, getting to know him better. He was happy but the consecutive dances are incredibly exhausting. So he excused himself and stood by the table, 
guarding the food with Tiger. The food should be guarded from them. Toru took the chance to dance with Shintaro. And Rintaro wanted to cheer Osamu up so he also pulled him to the dance floor. Where they ended up beside Toru and Shintaro. Close enough that they could hear the two's conversation. Thank you. Shintaro tilted his head in confusion. What for Oikoa-san? For saving Tsumu. Osamu stiffened when he heard that. He saved Tsumu? From what? Without you. Tsumu might not be here today. Osamu's grip on Rintaro's hand tightened so much that it hurt but the other didn't care. Also hearing what Toru said. His eyes widening in shock. What does he mean by that? Oikoa-san. Shintaro's voice was strained as he remembered what happened that day. I didn't know he almost died you know. Not until he told me. I would have lost my best friend if not for you. So thank you. I can't even begin to imagine what would have happened if. Toru choked. If you weren't there. Even the thought of the possibility makes me sick. Shintaro's breath hitched as the thought passed through his mind as well. Beside them. Rintaro pulled a trembling Osamu closer to him. And maneuvered them so the gray-haired twin has a clear view of Atsumu. It's okay. Atsumu's okay. Rintaro whispered in Osamu's ear as he walked them slowly away from Toru and Shintaro but stopped when he felt Osamu's hands clutched the back of his shirt. No. No. Stay. I wanna. I wanna know. I need to know what happened. Osamu let out a shaky breath. Trying to stop himself from crying as he tucked his head on the crook of Rintaro's neck. With only his eyes showing. Still trained on his twin talking with Tiger by the food. His eyes burned as he stared at Atsumu. Terrified of the thought that the second he closes his eyes, the blonde would disappear. He embraced Rintaro tighter, tensing to hide his trembling form. He told me he gave up you know. What? Atsumu doesn't give up. He's Atsumu. He told me that when he saw that car coming closer, he deliberately didn't move away. Ice flooded Osamu's veins. He could stand Atsumu being angry at him. He could stand being ignored. He could stand only looking at Atsumu from afar. He could and he would bear all of those as long as Atsumu's still there. To know that he almost lost his brother without him none the wiser. To just wake up one day and Atsumu's gone without him being able to do anything about it. The thought almost made him puke. Oh god. It's my fault. If I was there with him maybe. Maybe what? Osamu doesn't know what would have happened had he been there. The fact that Atsumu's still here just proves that he doesn't need Osamu. In fact. Maybe if he'd been there. It would have been worse. Because he's a shitty person and an even shittier brother. Rather than saving Atsumu. He probably would have pushed him further. All Osamu knows is that if he had been a better brother. If he'd been someone Atsumu could rely on. He wouldn't have almost died. Atsumu wouldn't have given up. He wouldn't leave Osamu. Except he almost did. Because Osamu left him first. He would have died thinking I hate him. He needs to let Atsumu know that he doesn't hate him. That he could never hate him. And that if he ever needs Osamu. He'd always be there. Osamu doesn't know what might have happened if he was there back then. But he sure as hell is not going to allow that to happen again. Atsumu subtly glanced at his twin in his peripheral vision as he pulled them towards somewhere secluded. He's worried. Osamu looks horrible. Like he hasn't been sleeping the past few days. Or that he's been crying. Or that he's gonna puke. Or that he's gonna pass out any second. Or all of the above. He's been worried since Osamu, who looks like he's about to keel over any second, interrupted him thanking Tiger for saving Toru and asked him to talk. Atsumu agreed of course. He got even more worried when, as they were walking to somewhere, Osamu timidly asked if he can hold his hand. I just, I need to go. You're here, you know. Osamu choked as he wiped his tears away. Atsumu didn't understand a word he said but he still gave his hand in panic, which just seemed to make Osamu cry even more. After he calmed Osamu down, he took the lead and led them towards a nearby park. He's worried but, he would be lying if he said he isn't at least happy. This is the closest, both physically and emotionally, he's been with Osamu in what seems like forever. And, it kind of reminded Atsumu of the Osamu when they were kids. Everyone always thought that Atsumu had been the crybaby and while it's true now, back when they were kids, it was actually Osamu. They were both very emotional babies. Atsumu's just the loud annoying one that throws temper tantrums. Osamu was a different kind of emotional. He was the quiet twin. The one who's skittish and would always hide behind Atsumu. But he also gets upset easily. And when he does become upset, he'd frown and cry quietly, seeking Atsumu for comfort. Then, 
The now blonde would try to pick a fight with anything and anyone that made his brother cry. Between the two of them, it's Osamu who always cared too much. It just seemed like it's Atsumu because when Atsumu cares, he cares so much, but only for a few people. Osamu was the one who cared too much about what other people thought of them, so he's more sensitive as a child. Atsumu kind of misses that Osamu. As they grew older, Osamu became more mature and reliable and while Atsumu is thankful for that, he also misses acting like the older brother. Never mind that he's only older by a few minutes. Do you remember when we were kids? I was always the one crying. Osamu spoke after a long moment of silence and Atsumu smiled at his words perfectly mirroring Atsumu's thoughts. I remember. And I remember thinking of you as my hero. I always thought of you as the strongest person in the world. Osamu spoke in a wistful tone. The corners of his mouth lifted into a pained smile. Atsumu doesn't know how to feel about that so he ignored it for now. He wonders why Osamu is telling him this though. I saw you as an unwavering mountain. You were always so strong. Always standing tall and I always believed that nobody and nothing could take you down. As we grew up, that belief never changed. Never wavered. In fact, it grew stronger. Just like you did. Osamu looked at Sumu in the eyes when he said that. Willing at Sumu to believe him. And he did. He does. Atsumu believes him, not because he thought he was strong, he stopped thinking that a long time ago, but because he could see it in Osamu's eyes. His breath got caught in his throat at the conviction in Osamu's voice. Then Osamu looked away and he could breathe again. You never cared about what people said about you. You didn't spare them even a glance and just stayed focused on a goal so big others could only dream of it. And I, Osamu swallowed. I always admired you for that. Even when others saw you as a callous jerk. I never stopped being proud of you. But I hated it too. Atsumu stilled. Wondering what part Osamu hated. It bothered me so much that you wouldn't say something about their comments to Yaz. They'd all avoid you and talk shit about you. I hated them. Osamu hissed while Atsumu could only stare with wide eyes. He remembers those times. When Osamu told him that everybody hated him and he just brushed it all off. When everybody avoided him and Osamu kept on trying to make him play nice with the others. But Atsumu never did. Why should he? He doesn't care about them and their opinions. Not when he thought of them as beneath him. He was worried about me. Osamu never worried about himself. About whatever Atsumu's reputation might do to his. That was evident with how he still stayed with Atsumu even though everybody hated him. That's why I decided to be stronger too. If I'm going to cower behind you. The least I could do was protect your back. I never thought I would be the one stabbing it. Samu no. Just. Just let me say this. Please. Atsumu nodded reluctantly. But scooted closer to Osamu. I firmly believed that there was nothing you can't overcome. That every problem you will face. You will defeat so beautifully that even your enemies would watch both in awe and envy. You're the strongest person I know. But somehow. For some time. I forgot you were a person. The sudden silence let the words hang in the air. Humans are weak. We're fragile in a lot of ways and the few who are strong. Still have their moments of weakness. And I. I couldn't wrap my head around the idea of you ever being weak. You're my strong and invincible big brother. The thought that you were anything but. Couldn't sink in. Osamu's eyebrows furrowed. As if the idea of Atsumu being weak still confuses him. Then Sakusa came and the image of you that I built in my head slowly crumbled. Atsumu's breath hitched, shivering as Osamu's voice suddenly turned cold. You let him walk all over you. You let him insult you. You let him abuse you, Tsumu. And you let him do all of those with a pained smile on your face. Tripping over your feet just to cater to him and all you get in return is pain. Osamu's voice grew colder, steelier, and louder with every word, as his fists clenched tightly in anger. Then at the end, his voice fell to a whisper, as if exhausted. All Atsumu could do was bow his head in shame as he bit his lip to stop himself from crying at the reminder of what he let himself go through. You might not know but I've heard you cry over him. Muffle your screams on your pillow in pain over him. Lose sleep over him. Work yourself to death for him. Hurt yourself because of him. And every time that happened, the realization that you were just as much of a human as everybody else was slowly sinking in and I could not accept it. I should have been there for you. Should have fought harder to make you see how much he was hurting you. I should have beat him up. I should have Atsumu interrupted as Osamu grew angrier and angrier at himself. It's not your fault Samu. I loved Osakusa. He still does. 
But maybe if he says it in past tense enough, he'd convince himself. You know how stubborn I am. We would have gotten into fights and I don't care. Silence. Only the sound of their heavy breathing was heard as Atsumu stared in surprise at Osamu's sudden outburst. I don't care. He repeated, in a lower voice. We fight over the smallest things. If all I needed to do was get beat up by you, then I'd gladly do it if it means you didn't have to endure all that. Instead I... Head clenched his jaw, angry at himself. Instead I treated you the same way he did. Samu. I hurt you. I insulted you. I fucking joined a bet regarding when he would break up with you. It's not your fault. Atsumu said firmly through gritted teeth. Glaring at Osamu and daring him to fight back. I'm the one who let myself go through all those things. I'm the one who stayed with him even if it was obvious he wanted me gone. And I'm the one who pulled away from you. And that was the truth. Atsumu had always known that Osamu hates Kiyumi, so he decided not to hang out with them together to avoid conflict, and since he was always with Osamu already, he decided to just hang out with Kiyumi in his spare time. You pulled away because I pushed you away. No you. Osamu glared at him. You stopped hanging out with me because I was becoming toxic. I'd spew insult after insult in your direction every time I saw you. I know you know that. Because if I didn't do that, you would have gone to me for comfort. Instead, you went to Ikora because I was becoming a part of the problem. Atsumu stayed silent because he couldn't deny that. All was silent for a long while before Osamu spoke again. I did all of those because I wanted to taunt you. To goad you into fighting back. Because I wanted you to prove that you were still the invincible big brother that I knew. I did all of those things to you so you could live up to an impossible standard that I made up for you in my head. And whenever you didn't, because you were already emotionally drained in dealing with Sakusa, I get disappointed, betrayed, hurt, and I do it all over again, each time worse than the last, until I stepped over the line, and still you didn't fight back. Then one day, I forgot there was ever a line I wasn't supposed to cross, and when I, your supposed protector, stuck so many knives in your back, everyone else followed suit, everyone else thought it was okay because I did it. And I never stopped them. In fact, I encouraged it. Osamu bowed his head in shame, guilt, and regret. Atsumu didn't say anything because he didn't know what to say, or even how to feel. He wishes things between him and Osamu were still the same. That every fight could be solved by beating the shit out of each other. Who would have thought that words hurt more than their fists? He didn't do anything though because he knows that Osamu needs this. They both need this. I wanted to be strong enough to protect you from people who wanted to bring you down. Instead, I stomped all over you until you fell. And for that I'm sorry. I'm so sorry Tsumu. They were both staring at each other with tears streaming down their faces. When you came home that day and immediately broke down. Something inside me snapped. I was livid. I was so, so mad and I didn't even know why. All that really registered was that you weren't my big brother anymore. My big brother is strong, unbreakable, always standing tall, a mountain, a fortress, a diamond, and in that moment, you were everything but those. All I thought was that you deserved it, that whatever you were going through, you had it coming. Osamu sobbed. Now that he knows what almost happened, it puts that day into perspective. Because Atsumu almost never went home that day, he almost never went home at all. When you left to go live with Oikora, I was relieved. I wouldn't see you. You wouldn't be there to destroy that image I built of you inside my head. I could still preserve the memory of an unbreakable brother. As time passed by, I grew scared. Of what? I didn't know. All I knew was that I was terrified and I needed my big brother. But I wasn't ready to face you. I'm weak and I couldn't handle the realization that you couldn't protect me anymore. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I couldn't protect you. That's when I realized. You are strong. Still the strongest person I know but you are far from unbreakable. Osamu sniffled. And all Atsumu could do is sit there silently sobbing as he listened to his brother. I know Sakusa was not the first person to hurt you. He's just the asshole who did it to the point that I couldn't ignore it any longer. I know that. And the fact that not only did I remain ignorant, but that I had a major contribution to your suffering, is my greatest shame. You're my brother. Whether or not you're older doesn't matter. I should have been there for you the same way you've always been there for me. But I was so caught up in an impossible fantasy that I deliberately hurt you so you could live up to it. 
and suddenly I was the person I was trying to protect you from. And you're strong. So damn strong that you endured when you didn't have to. Shouldn't have had to. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Tsumu. I'm so sorry. Osamu was down on his knees, clutching at Sumu's pants as he apologized, not even expecting forgiveness. His tears cascade down his face and into the still snowy ground below, instantly freezing. No Samu. Atsumu sobbed as he too went down on his knees to embrace Osamu. It's not your fault. It's mine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to see me like that. I'm sorry for not being able to protect you. I'm sorry for being weak. I'm sorry for no. Osamu interrupted with a choked sob as he desperately hugged Atsumu closer. No Tsumu. There's nothing wrong with being weak. You're human. Tsumu. It took me a long time to realize that but it doesn't make it any less true. You're human and it's okay. It's normal to be weak. Trees get uprooted. Diamonds get cut and even mountains get destroyed and I was somehow expecting you to do the impossible. There's nothing wrong with being weak. And I'm sorry for putting too much on you. For making you feel like you always had to be strong. I'm sorry for hurting you. For not being there for you. It's okay. It's okay Samu. E it's not not. Atsumu sobbed as he pulled Osamu closer, rubbing his back in comfort since the other is now hiccuping and stuttering due to so much crying. It's okay. As long as you're here now. It's okay. I'll ne never. I'll never hurt you again. Atsumu laughed wetly because that's a promise he doesn't believe. Not because he thinks Osamu would hurt him like he did before but because they're siblings. They're bound to fight and hurt each other. It's normal. But at the end of the day, they're still going to be siblings. And he knows that Osamu will certainly try not to hurt him. He'll walk on eggshells around Atsumu. He'll be more protective. He'll treat him like he'll break any second. Then Atsumu would be fed up and he'd get mad and then they'd fight and then they'd make up. Atsumu will be the same. He'll try to appear strong for Osamu. He'll try to be perfect. And he'll turn out fake. Osamu would get mad and then they'd fight and then they'd make up. They'll both try to make up for their mistakes and they'll both learn that they don't need to change. They just need each other. It'll take a while before everything goes back to normal. But they're in the right direction and sooner or later, they'll find their way towards each other. They're brothers twins. They came to this world together. And until the end, together they shall be. <coughs> Toru and Tiger are walking side by side as they go back to the hotel. Kotaro and Ryota left their side to go wherever overgrown puppies go. They decided to take the scenic route. Passing by a view deck with a perfect view of the full moon. Without a word, Toru walked towards it. Only to be stopped as a strong pair of arms circled him. What? Don't. Please. Toru felt alarm bells ring in his head when he heard Tiger's shaky whisper. Almost whimpering as he begged Toru. Toru just stood there in shock. Surprised at the sudden turn of events and not knowing what to do. What happened? He flinched slightly when felt something cold land on his neck. Only to realize in horror that Tiger was crying. His entire body trembling as he held Toru close. Oh my god what the fuck? What happened? Toru tried to move to face Tiger but the taller male just tightened his hold on him. So he had no choice but to just turn his head to the side to look at the back of Tiger's head. That is still tucked into the crook of Toru's neck. Kit cut. Tiger didn't answer so Toru lifted his hand and laid it on top of the arms holding him. What's wrong? I won't know unless you talk to me. Tiger kept silent. What was he supposed to say? That he had a flashback to that day when he saw Toru walk towards the cliff. That he panicked at the memory. That he suddenly felt like everything else that happened after that was a dream and that they're still on that cliff. That the truth was that he was actually too late and wasn't able to pull Toru away from the edge. He doesn't know what to say without sounding stupid. Clearly, Toru's here. Clearly, he's alive. But he can't swallow down the dread that slowly choking him at even the thought of that day. The cliff. The tree. The snow. Everything looked too much like what he saw that day. Even the moon's shine looked too much like the sunset that shone an ethereal light over Toru's frame. Everything just happened so fast. One moment Toru moved from his side then when Tiger looked. All he saw was the older walking towards the edge. Then the images of that day flashed through his mind. Making everything seem so slow. And Toru so far away. And he felt like this time. He couldn't reach him. Then he felt his heart lurch out of his throat. Blocking the scream that threatened to spill out of his mouth. And now they are here. 
him crying into the crook of Toru's neck as he held the older's live frame into his trembling form, desperate to keep him there, keep him far away from the sunset that threatened to swallow him. He stood there, his limbs frozen and locked together because he felt like if he loosened his hold on Toru, even for a bit, he'd lose him forever. He doesn't know how long they stood there as Toru waited for Tiger to calm down. He was getting worried though since it's still cold and he doesn't want them getting sick. So he moved a little, and the arms around him tightened in reflex. Then Tiger spoke in a small voice. Don't. Please don't go. Don't jump. And Toru suddenly realized what made Tiger like this. His breath hitched in guilt. I did this. Oh god. Toru suddenly remembered why the scene was familiar. He may have been out of it back then, and he might not care enough to be traumatized by it, but there was someone else there who saw. The man who pulled him back. The man who cried for him as he begged Toru to live. The man who cared for Toru so much that he convinced him to live. And the man who took care of Toru when he couldn't even bear to open his eyes. He saw all of those. He saw Toru, a friend, try to end everything. And if Toru is traumatized by only the thought of losing Atsumu, how much worse would it be for Tiger who actually saw how close Toru was to dying? Swallowing the bile rising in his throat. Toru also tried to tuck his head into the crook of Tiger's neck as he lifted a hand to cut the younger's cheek. He pressed a small kiss on the side of Tiger's head then whispered assurances into his ear. I'm here Kit Kat. I'm not leaving. I'm not gonna jump. I'm here to stay yeah. You saved me Kit Kat. Thank you. I'm here. Slowly. Tiger's hands loosened as clarity returned in his eyes. Ikoa san. Shh, I'm here. Toru wiped away the tears still running down Tiger's face. And Tiger took the opportunity to press a kiss on Toru's pulse. Then his lips just stayed there. Feeling the slow beat of Toru's pulse. That night as they laid in bed. Toru run his hands through Tiger's hair to coax the younger man to sleep. Cradling Tiger's head as he lay on Toru's chest. Tiger fell asleep to the sound of Toru's heartbeat and slow breathing in and the memories that plagued him finally let him be. Because Toru's there to drive all those away.